Hey guys, Buildzoid here, and today we're going to be doing a bit of a filler video because a fan of the channel sent me some pictures of a uh, 6950 XT OC formula so that I could do a PCB breakdown with it. But also he sent me these pictures because, uh, or more like I guess he had these pictures because uh, uh, he basically got liquid into the PCIe slot and... Uh, by liquid, I mean water. He got water in the PCIe slot, and that water promptly shorted out the 12-volt pins to ground, burning this part of the card. Um, now, apparently, he did manage to get, like, send the card off for RMA, so hopefully that doesn't get rejected. But if it does get rejected, how, how would you get the card up and running, um, is what we're going to be answering here today. So the way you would get the card up and running again if, with this kind of damage is actually very, very simple. Because if you look at the pinout of the PCIe slot, you can see that we've got 12 volts, 12 volts, 12 volts, 12 volts. So the, the burnt section is just these three 12 volt pins. Then on the back of the card, we've got some more 12 volt pins, and then we've got these two grounds over here. So if we go back to our picture of the, the burnt up card, um, this is our ground pin. It's just sort of dangling in the breeze because it got so hot that it like unstuck itself from the PCB. So we, I would just cut this off at this point. Like half, more, like basically half the PCIe slot is just ground pins. It doesn't matter if one of them goes missing. It really doesn't. So I would just cut that off because at this point, like, you're not going to be gluing it back to the card. At least I wouldn't bother gluing it back to the card. It'll work just fine without it. So we're going to get rid of that because it's just called, like, it's basically just making a mess. Now, this right here, um, you could try clean this up a bit. I would probably try to clean up this area a bit just so that like you don't have any way for 12 volts to get back into this burnt out section because this is probably still shorted out. Like I bet if you measure the resistance from like over here to this, which this right here is ground, right? Because that, that connects to our ground pin over there as well as this side of the capacitors. And like one side of those capacitors is for voltage and the other one is ground. Um, Anyway, so if you measure from like here to here, I bet you you'll find that the resistance is actually very low. So if you put any amount of voltage over here, it's going to very quickly start going to ground and it's going to start producing heat and it's going to burn the PCB anymore, uh, even more. So we don't want that. Um, so we want to prevent any voltage from getting into this burnt out section. Um, so on the front, we don't really have to do too much because there's, there's no PCIe pins over here. They burnt away. Um, on the back of the card, however, we do still have those two 12 volt pins. So I would literally just cut them off right here, like peel them off of the card. Like ba basically what I would do is you'd take a box cutter blade or something. Well, I'd use a box cutter um, and you would basically just peel off the, the gold fingers and then I'd cut them off here. Um, or you could peel them pretty far back like yeah, Like it, it just get them out of the PCIe slot so that you, you don't get 12 volts coming into this burnt section from the PCIe slot. And yes, this burnt section is connected to these 12 volt pins on the back. There's gonna be a bunch of like power, there's gonna be a bunch of vias just stitching those two uh, sides of the card together. Like this is one 12 volt power plane, right? Ultimately these, these pins probably connect to this inductor over here and this inductor also connects to this side. So yeah, um, so these pins gotta go. Um, and now speaking of the induct inductor, so this is probably the input filtering inductor for the PCIe slot. Now I say probably because uh, while I th like I can't see anything on the back of the card that looks like a buck converter that could, you know, be like that would require this inductor over here. And typically PCIe slots do have an input filtering inductor. Um, I'm not 100% certain because I don't actually have the card in hand, but you can check with a multimeter if this inductor is connected to these pins on the back, then it's the input filtering inductor for the PCIe slot because why else would it be connected to the PCI, like 12 volt pins of the PCIe slot. So anyway, assuming that it is the input filtering inductor, which I'm like 99% sure it is, uh, remove it. Um, yeah, we're going to remove it because we want to isolate this burnt section from any source of power. And we do need to power all of the things that used to run off of the PCIe slot because, uh, well, they're not connected to the PCIe slot anymore, right? We cut off the pins. Uh, the pins on this side burnt away and or more like got vaporized. I wonder if there's still bits of those pins in the PCIe slot of the motherboard that this card was in. They might have actually just gotten vaporized as well. Um, anyway... Um, yeah, but the pins on the front are gone, the pins on the back should be cut off, and then once you remove this inductor, well, there's just, like, where are all the things that used to run off of the PCIe slot gonna get their 12 volts from? Well, that's 
Very easy. Uh, that's very simple, or at least it should be simple. Um, why is Zoom not working? There we go. So uh, the way this inductor is probably wired is that 12 volts comes in like this and then come, goes out to, you know, whatever random stuff on the card needs 12 volts. So, like this will probably power things like the fans, uh, minor voltage rails like 1.8 volts, 0.75 volts, uh, 0.95 volts. Do these even have that rail? I don't remember. It doesn't really matter. Um, so this should be the output side of our input filtering inductor, and this should be the input side of our input filtering inductor. So after we remove it, we don't care about the input side, we just care about this side. And now we just need to find a convenient source of 12 volts um, that is connected to the 8-pin power connectors of the card. Uh, and the cool thing is you don't have to worry about like imbalancing the power delivery on this card because this card has one power plane for all of the PCIe power connectors. Like these three inductors, each of them is input filtering for each of the three eight pins. Yeah, they all connect to the same power plane. So this card has one giant 12 volt power plane, uh, at least for the PCIe power connectors. There's even a small chance that this actually connects to that same power plane, though that would be rather weird, because typically you don't want the PCIe slot connected to the to the PCIe power connectors, because, yeah, that, like, you could potentially turn the card on without having the 8 pins plugged in, and that could be potentially bad. So typically the PCIe slot isn't connected to the PCIe power connectors, but... Yeah, on this card, and also typically PCIe power connectors aren't all connected to each other either, but this is an ASRock GPU, and ASRock has some very unique ideas about uh, the input side of both their motherboards and GPUs. Um, their motherboards, for example, don't have input filtering inductors, which is a interesting approach. Um, so, yeah, anyway... Um, so since this has one massive 12 volt power plane, you could probably just grab a wire, like assuming this is connected to the 8 pin power connectors, all you'd have to do is connect a wire from here to there and the card should work. Yeah, like it really is as simple as just sort of clean this area up a bit, remove the dangly ground pin, remove these 12 volt pins on the back, remove this inductor, and then assuming that this is connected to the 8 pin power connectors, connect you know, connect a wire like this. I'd probably use an 18 gauge wire just because I have a bunch of 18 gauge wires just lying around. Uh, a 20 gauge would also probably be just fine. I wouldn't really use anything thinner than that. Well, actually a 22 would probably, even a 24 maybe. The thing is like the PCIe slot is limited to a little over five amps, uh, or at least it should be limited to a little over five amps. So you don't exactly need a super thick wire for this connection. Um, however, let's say that this, this capacitor isn't connected to the 8 pins, and this is one of the capacitors that's actually connected to the PCIe slot, which would be very annoying. I mean, worst case scenario, you can always just run a wire that goes like, you know, this, and you just connect to one of the inductors. Um, and then definitely, you know, you, you've sorted that problem out, um, of where the 12 volt come, like, how you're gonna replace the missing 12 volts, uh, that, you know, the card used to have from the PCIe slot. So that's how you can deal with that. Now, uh, we're just going to go to the assumption that this connection would have worked out just fine. Uh, if you've never soldered on a high power GPU, so anything above 200 watts, or really I should say high power PCB, basically anything above 200 watts with like six PCB layers or more, and if I'm not mistaken, 6950 XTs are probably 12 layer PCBs, um... Doing, like, you know, the, the whole, like, oh, yeah, just throw a wire across here. That sounds way easier in theory than it is in practice. Because most soldering irons will not put a dent in the solder on that capacitor. In fact, you're probably not going to be able to take off... Eh, no, this inductor is probably going to be pretty easy because the 12-volt the power plane on this side is, like, not really much of anything. And on the output side, it probably isn't that substantial either. But, uh... Yeah, over by this capacitor, if this is actually powered by those 8-pin power connectors, this thing is on a very substantial 12-volt power plane, and it will suck up a ton of heat. So, yeah, that that's kind of the thing is just like, while in theory, you know, running a wire from there to here, very simple. In practice, this is going to need probably a lot of preheating, and as large a soldering iron tip as you can comfortably fit into the area. 
um, because 12 volt power planes on GPUs tend to suck up a lot of heat um, on any GPU that has a high enough TDP. Because that, that's the funny thing is if you grab like a 75 watt card, then it re it's very easy to do soldering on those. If you have a, something like a 6950 XT, not easy. Not easy at all. Um, and so, yeah, that, that's kind of the thing with this is just like you're almost certainly going to have to preheat the board. Even if you have a good soldering iron, you'd still want to preheat the board. Um, like, I'd probably be preheating it to around 100 degrees Celsius, potentially a bit more, like 110 degrees Celsius is just fine. Like, that's not going to damage any of the components. In fact, most electronic components uh, that you find on a GPU will be rated to storage temperatures up to 150 degrees Celsius or at least 125 right? And so preheating to like 110 is, is just fine. Um, so basically, and that, that's just going to make the soldering irons job a lot easier if the board isn't at room temperature. If the board's at room temperature, then yeah, soldering to this capacitor is really going to suck. Um, and the same goes for this inductor down here. Um, and then, yeah, so that's kind of the main thing is uh, you, you need preheating. <laughs> Arguably, you should also use flux, but if you use a flux core solder, uh, you could generally get away with not adding any more flux to it. Um, it you're not going to have a good-looking solder joint, but you will have a functional one most of the time. Um, the main thing is being able to actually melt the solder that's already on the board, because on high-power boards, that, that tends to be actually surprisingly difficult. Um, yeah. So... Anyway, uh, that's it for this video. That's that's all I wanted to talk about is just how I, like, like hopefully the person who sent me these pictures, like, they get their card RMA'd and they, they don't actually have to, you know, run jumper wires to replace the now burnt out 12 volt uh, PCIe pins. Um, but uh, if their RMA gets rejected, then this is actually a rather easy fix. Um, yeah. So... There, that's it for the video. Uh, thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe, leave any comments, questions, suggestions down in the comment section below. If you'd like to support what I do here with actually hardcore overclocking, I have a Patreon. Uh, there's a link to that down in the description. I also have a, uh, there's also the Teespring store where you can pick up shirts, uh, hoodies, uh, posters, you know, the usual YouTuber merch. And then I also have a band camp. Uh, if you absolutely hate your ears, you might want to check that out. Um, and you can support me through that as well. So there's a link to that to, down in the description as well. And that's it for the video. So thank you for watching and goodbye.